Hey guys, I recently made a poll about which video would you like to see next and the actual immortal tank option 1, so that's exactly what I'm gonna cover in this video. Now before we begin I just wanna give a disclaimer, since this video might be very misleading to new players who are unfamiliar with how tanking works in ESO and what are tanks responsibilities. In actual content, a tank's job isn't just surviving while holding aggro of hard-hitting enemies. It's also providing buffs and debuffs which contribute a lot to the DPS of the group. And in this video, we'll completely ignore that and make a funny troll build. Consider this more like a curious testing of how far can we push survivability, rather than actual build you should use. In the end, it's just a video game, so as long as you find people that are fine with you not bringing any buffs or debuffs, you can go ahead. But don't do that when playing with randoms as they will most probably expect you to fulfill regular tank's job. So, the whole build we base around using Magma Shell, which basically makes you immortal against non-oblivion damage. The skill makes it so whenever you will take damage that's higher than 3% of your max health, it gets capped at 3% of your max health. So for example, if you have 40,000 max health, each damage tick can only deal up to 1200 damage. You still could die with lots of damage ticks, but it's extremely easy to outheal. In order to be truly immortal, we need to keep up that magma shell at all times. And the skill lasts only 12 seconds and costs 200 ultimate. So in order to do that, we'll have to utilize lots of different skills and item sets. We'll use the Elfbane set to extend magma shell's duration from 12 seconds to 18. Elfbane is a PvP set from Vlastarus in Cyrodiil, which can also be bought from guild traders. And it extends the duration of flame damage over time abilities by 5 seconds. Magma shell counts as a flame damage over time ability because it does deal some tiny negligible damage around you during its duration. So it gets extended by Elfbane. I said before that magma shell's duration is 12 seconds, but that's after after applying the Eternal Mountain passive, which increases the duration of your Art and Heart abilities by 20%. Magma Shell's base duration is 10 seconds. Elfbane then extends it to 15 seconds, and only then the Eternal Mountain passive gets applied, so we end up with 18 second duration under Magma Shell. The next set we'll utilize is Blessing of the Potentates, which is a 3 piece PvP set from Cyrodiil, which can also be bought from guild traders, and it reduces the cost of your ultimate abilities by 15% so it will reduce magma shell's cost by 30 ultimate points. This will put your magma shell's cost at 170, but now we'll unfortunately have to increase that cost, because in order to sustain this much ultigen, we'll have to use Accelerating Drain, which is a skill from the Vampire skill line, and being a stage 1 vampire will increase the cost of your non-vampire abilities by 3%, putting your magma shell's cost at 175. We can fit in another 5 piece set, and I tested two choices, Drake's Rush and Heartland Conqueror, with the idea that Heartland will be boosting the decisive trait and weapon. Drake's Rush came out on top, but only by a slight margin. The next thing that can make it easier to build up enough ultimate for magma in time, is choosing the proper race. The two best choices for this specific purpose are North and Imperial. North's stalwart passive will proc twice during your magma shell, giving you 10 ultimate, and Imperial's red diamond passive will reduce magma shell's cost by 10. I've used North because all of my tank characters are North, because it's much superior to Imperial when it comes to regular tanking, without any weird gimmicks like what we're doing right now. Another very important thing is that you'll need to use the extremely expensive heroism potions, crafted with Dragon's Blood, Dragon Reum and Columbine, in order to keep up constant minor heroism. So this is the whole build and I want to clarify a few more things. On body armor I use the exact same traits and enchants as in my other builds, since there is no trait that would benefit this specific purpose. You obviously don't need reinforce because magma shell caps the damage, and you don't need any sustain traits because you'll be constantly proking the battle roar passive, making it basically impossible to run out of resources. On jewelry enchants it's kind of the same thing, you don't need additional sustain. I use swift traits since it's the only utility you can benefit from with this build, and I use the magicka cost reduction enchants. On weapons, it's extremely important that you don't use a shield to get the full benefit of the size of trait. So you have to use either a 200 weapon or two 100 weapons. Personally, I use the nice stuff. Food won't significantly impact your performance, but if you're looking for a recommendation, I suggest Bewitched Sugar School. This option allows you to store more resources, and you don't need to worry about recovery too much, since the battle roar passive has you covered. Choosing food that doesn't provide max HP might reduce the damage taken with Magma Shell, but you shouldn't entirely disregard your survivability outside of the Magma Shell window. As for champion points, they won't make much of a difference since any issues regarding survivability or sustain are already addressed. The only beneficial option might be Celerity. The same holds true for the Mondus Stone. The only thing that might be useful is the Steed Mondus, which increases your movement speed. Regarding skills, the primary ability you'll be using is Accelerating Drain, 
It's a 3 second channel that generates 5 ultimate every second. It also generates the 5 ultimate with the initial tick, so that gives 20 ultimate per cast. Note that this skill must be rank 4 or it will generate significantly less ultimate. Besides that, all you need is a taunt and a few healing abilities, such as coagulating blood and or resolving vigor. While you could slot some supportive abilities, you won't have much time to use them as you'll be channeling Accelerating Drain most of the time. In the recording you're about to see, you'll notice that my skill setup is somewhat random because it doesn't really matter. In the recording, I often bust it with this build while completely disregarding the escalating damage from moldering taint slams. This approach allows us to keep Bassi stationary. However, we eventually abandoned the strategy as it turned out to be achievable with a regular Necrotank build that doesn't require sacrificing 3 support sets just to make it work, as shown in my other video. Nonetheless, this gave me the idea and it proves that this build can endure any damage. There are a few additional things worth mentioning, such as not having to block most of the attacks. As with Magma Shell, it won't mitigate the damage any further. However, you should still block most of the heavy attacks, as they can stun you if not blocked. Another crucial factor is that you must weave light attacks to activate your passive ultimate generation. Usually this passive generation gets triggered by blocking, but with this build you won't be blocking much. Lastly, if you decide to go with Drake's Rush, remember to bash on your front bar every 18 seconds. But all of that was just a troll build. A slightly different version of this build can be actually useful even in very optimized groups. The watered down version of this build only needs Elfbane, so you can still bring a 5 piece support set and a monster set. Instead of investing so much into ultigen, you will instead utilize your healer's pillager profit proc to be able to use 2 consecutive magma shells for a total of 36 seconds of being immortal. This can be used for example in Dreadseal Reef on the first boss to keep both bosses stacked and completely static. You can find the video of it here and a full build in its description. It can also be used in Cloudress when skipping mini bosses. The magma shell will allow you to tank 3 enraged minis until Smaja dies. You can see the video here and once again the build from that video is in its description. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.